in terms of um, your Fijian defence then, Kendo, off these five mans, would you be setting Nakarawa further at the back or would you be setting them at the front? Um, Kendo, sort of looking at the analysis, if the, they do the three two mostly in their half, say, and they will win a decent amount of the front, and I want to contest them, I'm going to put my best, quickest jumper on Tipperick on that on that front pod and as i say we're going to watch tipperick hard and we're going to we're going to go for him and we're going to close the gap as much as we can and also at the front it's very unlikely we're going to get a clean two-handed steal like we would near the middle of the tail all we want to do at the front is just disrupt them so i'm asking a kunitani a, a mata or I, i'm not sure who the fastest in the air is but i'm asking them just to go up with one arm and just try and spoil just get anything you can on the ball to mess their ball up um, you know, best case is a is a slap down onto our side, but even if it's a slight spill for them or knocks their drill off, then then that's a win for us. Um, however, in my sort of, uh, we might be getting into it too early, but like with knowing what I know about Fiji and that they play all over Europe, they're they're not as you know the Wales guys pick from four teams from a very small area. They've been together a long time. The Fijian team would be a little bit more fragmented, so I'd want to keep things very simple with a sort of con overall contesting policy of actually letting them win the front ball and let's cover the, the middle and the tail a bit more. Vald, anything? No, no, 100% I agree. Yeah, 100% Yeah, it's interesting on the, on the cohesion sort of side of things. Yeah. Like you mentioned, I sort of tipped in with the Bob thing as well. Um, we were saying before. When do you think you would build up like I suppose the Rugby World Cup, that's the most time a Fijian team is going to get together. Yeah. Would you, like, let's say those preseason games, they'll have the Pacific Nations Cup, I suppose. Would you phase how you build up your defensive line out yourself at that stage? And then, like, what's the what's the sort of start and end point there throughout a World Cup cycle? So yeah, as you said, that's the most time they're going to get together. So at the end of the World Cup, should be the best our defensive line out has, has ever been. Um, however, you have to sort of tick boxes along the way to progress. So if we're getting there early and it, against their six-man, one, three, two, we're getting our two pods in the air and we're having a bit of movement to and fro, we're not getting beaten in the areas that they want to win the ball, then I might progress it to maybe um, a little bit more of a man on and we might chase the front. And we might push our prop off and move to more of a one, three, two ourselves off a six-man or add movement in with our pods. But if we're not hitting those tick boxes, then I'm not going to progress on to being more of a man on to making that back lift to make more of a decision. Who am I going to lift? Front lock or, or back lock? Or am I going to jump as well as am I going to lift? So I'd, I'd layer it on depending on how well things are going. But there's definitely a few, um, a few definite ticks that they're going to need before we, we allow them to push on. Yeah, nice. How far would you see... How many of those ticks do you reckon Fiji, Fiji could get up to that point of the last group game? Yeah, it obviously depends on how much, how much of the emphasis you're going to put on it. Um, obviously, when you play all these World Cup teams, when you're a minnow like Fiji against some of these big guys that are well drilled and stuff, that um, you, you, if you, you can't be aiming to disturb three out of ten or four out of ten balls. So it's really what objective and how much time you prepare to put on that. Is there other areas that in that World Cup campaign that you need to work on um, to be better? Winning your own ball, you attacking side, uh, winning your own ball, um, what to do with your turnover ball, with the quality of players that they've got. So it's just the decisions that you've got and the time that you've got to your me. And then obviously, once again, when you've worked with a lot of these guys in Europe, um, it's just that um, sometimes all these structured things, they, they, they it, it's not really in their culture to be the Anglo-Saxon, I'll do this as my job type of thing. So just knowing these guys, it's, um, it's, it's about, as, I, as Nick said, just making it as simple as possible and decide which battles you want to win and which ones you don't. So... Um, but I won't, I won't go and try and be too clever with it, especially against a team like Wales. Yeah, interesting. So, thanks very much, guys, for showing us how you would go through your process of analysing and what you're looking for and what you're thinking. Like, that was 
great. Um, I really appreciate your time on that one. And now I suppose it's time to see what's the results of what you've been looking at. Um, so, Kendall, do you want to go first and give that annotation a go? I am going to go... Do you, want, do, you, do you want to get X's or are you happy with just like dots like that? Uh, yeah, dots is fine. No, you didn't like that, did you? What, right, where are the X's? Uh, is there a stamp on the thing? <laughs> no. Out stamp, yeah, nice. Okay, so I'm going to go sort of uh, a bit of a, a, a two pod looking to. Uh, draw. Looking to get this guy up and this guy up, and they'd be my my best two jumpers. As we said, as the tournament goes on, we might look to bring this guy forward and up, but at the moment, we, I'm going to give them the front. Um, this this back pod is going to be on just off the sort of shoulder of the seven, knowing that he can get back for that Alan Wynn Jones quick throw to the tail. We all need to get there early to scan numbers, etc. But um, if I'm setting up here quite far forward, my weight's on the back foot and I know I'm going to get back and up. Sometimes I might actually set up here thinking, um, you know, letting Alan Wynn think that he, he can come forwards, but then I'm always going to go forwards and up. So that, that's my pause area there. Here, again, I'm looking to get back for that four straight up as well as not letting that four come forward and up in front of me. So these are the two areas I'm looking to really cut off and then I'm just going to let them have all that space. If they want to put Tipperick up there on a, on a fast ball, no problem at all. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they win that there. In terms of if, the, if they had a prop jumper prop, would that change any of your setup? Prop jumper prop? Yeah, look, I might then bring this guy, this jumper, even a bit further back because then this eight isn't an option here. We don't have a lob option here. So again, it just it makes my formation even better even better because I know there's only one thing they can really do in this area, which is straight up and down, which I don't mind. Nice. Uh, Deval, do you want to come in there and do you want me to rub that out? Fitzy? Uh, no, leave it there. Then we can screenshot with uh, both of them there then. Yeah. yeah no. So I'm very similar on a similar wavelength with, uh, with Nick. Um, and then all I'll do is similar bum, bum, bum. And just uh, some of the things that I would put in place here is um, is obviously just my jumper here, setting up slightly on the front shoulder of, of the four. And then this jumper just sitting up in slightly in front of Alan Wynn. And then obviously, once again, the, on these balls, if they're going to be coming in, in speed, I want us to be set up there early. If they're going to be calling in the line or taking a little bit more time, then you can play around a little bit more movement. But I want us to be really setting up on those positions. And then the big thing for me um, on that is just, is just the, the defense activation um, is actually getting in the air and putting, putting obstacles in the Rooker's line and, and, and jumping pods. As we know, uh, with some of the work that we've done before on the seven man is not a big morning threat, threat at this stage it's a big off the top threat uh, and and we want to be stopping them to get that ball cleanly to their nine and attacking that bondage line so um so that would be my idea so it's very similar to nick's it's exactly the same um for the for your scrum half in defense where are you placing him either are Mine would be in the would be in it would be in the trams and um, as I said and the hooker and the in the um, in the vacuum. Kendo. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah. Okay, so agreed on that one. Do um, you guys want to clear your annotations there? And Deval, do you want to start this one? Uh, this is the nine six plus one. So um, I'll be honest with you, I would go exactly the same setup um, on this. Um, bum, 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 bum. Same, same idea in the sense of let's set up slightly in front here, let's set up slightly in front here, 
let them, as, as Nick said, um, if I go, yeah, let them thread the needle and try and get over this box here. Um, uh, obviously, I've got them just obviously still got a guy here. Okay, and then obviously, I'll have my nine here as well that will come and help this guy. He'll start two meters out, but he'll always finish in the line. Um, if this guy wants to get off the line to jump here, if they really take forward ball, but um, that's what I'll do here because once again, my my idea is yes, they want to be forcing these back middle uh, middle back back balls so they can really attack. And if they took out that uh, nine at the front, what would you would you drop that guy protecting the front, or would you drop, or would you have a two and a pod? Um, I did ask myself the question here, yeah, where I would maybe sorry, uh, this guy would start here and and work it sorry just work its way to the left and then the nine take its place, um, because that would be something I would do. Um, let me just see that I write that out here. Yeah, six months spread. Yeah, I got my one coming off and my nine covering his back. Uh, okay. On that one, yeah. Okay, you're showing the picture that he's covered the front where he's getting into that he part. He shows the picture, but then, then, he, then he can get off the line. Because um, obviously we'll have one, one of these guys will be out. So I'll finish with a similar two-part system there. Nice. Very similar to, to what, what, um, what Pocock and them did. Okay. Only, nine, only the nine taking that space. It's a bit risky, yeah. Okay, so you'd have your... Uh, your plus one in that front as well. Uh, now I'll have him in the middle, yeah. Okay. And then, and then if they do come here, he can go there, and he can also still do a little bit of work at the back. Nice. So, back Kendo. Yeah, the same. Same Fitzy. I think sort of part of the overall tactic to to beat Wales is let them have that front ball, um, cut off where they want to go, which is that middle and tail, what where they're dangerous. And then also by letting them have the front, if if they do maul, we're in a, we're in a very good position to stop it. You know, heading in on, angling in towards the touch line, um, to to give us the best chance, so, so they can't maul us as well. How are you going to set up your trap for that nine to get the ball? Here, you start so, with... yeah. Look, it's just you know, we saw the way that. Um, Furlong was just like this, you know, all the way across, calling him out, really vocal, not knowing what's going on behind him at all. I'd want a bit more subtlety from my prop to turn where he's got one eye on him, but he looks like he could lift. And actually you're talking up, yeah, I'm front lift, I'm front lift. You even take a step in into the line just, but you're staying relatively open and you just make it clear that that nine is an option. And uh, you put him in a little bit of space, but knowing that you can turn and go. Um, and you need your, your guy in the trams to be to be very alert there as well. Okay, so you might have your your tight head then sort of half a meter or a meter off that five meter line. Yeah, not not, not too much for the big lad, but um, yeah, yeah. Know, he, he, he he still knows he's only got one job to do. But there's just a little bit of kidology around it. Nice. Okay, I'll save you draw on that one. So uh, you can draw. Um, sorry, that should say three two at the top, but uh, I can edit that. Uh, how are you defending that five, that sort of condensed five-man kendo? Uh, it's, it's, it's basically a, a bit of a, a bit of a man on, where we sort of set up just in in front of this seven to stop the, uh, the tipperick hard and fast going up, and then again just in front of the five to stop anything Alan Wynn's doing coming forward there. Um, you know, near the front, as I say, this uh, this up this. Um, this guy is our most athletic, quickest guy, hopefully, and he, he's he's going to take him on and go up. And then we've got this, you know, this guy could jump coming forwards and up as well. We know they've got the double movement. I wouldn't have this guy as a um, another jumper, a jumping option. I'd have him so he's either going to lift circle or lift here. Um, and you know, you might talk him up like he could take a lob, but I'd make things very simple. Where this guy is only going to lift, even though you know he, he isn't a prop, he's a back row, but he's only ever going to lift 
And then he's just got a decision to make on jump or jump. And in terms of, obviously, we've prepared that this is their sort of in their own um, half, sort of five man. If it was further up the pitch, would you be trying to take away the back a bit more? Or would you stick with that? Yeah, again, it would sort of depend on, on the previous analysis of, of, of where they go and what they do. But I definitely wouldn't, anything, you know, Tipperick does coming forwards or any sort of front dummy, I, I would not chase it. I'd completely block off there. I'd, you know, I wouldn't chase anything into that area at all. And then you're hoping that they do that double dummy and then Alan Wynn, whoever it was, came down the line and then ended up trying to get in this area. Actually, we've stuck together and then we can end up getting in the air. And instead of this jumper turning to lift this guy, he's got a very simple job. He just makes a call. Am I going to lift this guy or am I going to lift this guy? Nice. Deval, do you do anything different? No, well, if, they, if, they, if that's a really clear 3-2 setup with a three bunch and a two, I would do it 100% exactly the same way. If it is that some of the images where we had some doubts where there's a little bit of space between those guys, yeah. uh, my setup would be a little bit more like this. So also I would condense my boys. Uh, and then one of the things I would be doing is for him to set up on his back, uh, back, um, his back foot, for him to set up in front of the five here. So we try and take that back option away. Um, and then obviously he would just set up straight on the four. And then what I'd like to do is um, we, if they a little bit spread, get them to go and take this front ball with the seven just jumping on the spot or slightly forward. So that's why I'm lining up slightly behind. Um, and then one of the things we did see some of the times is they actually use a runner that comes around the corner here that keeps your front prop busy. So I would take that front prop totally out of the analysis with out of the plan with lifting so he, he doesn't feel threatened. And this would be this would be my jumping pod the whole time, and I would put a lot of pressure um, on on this on this zone here. Um, so block, show them a picture where we block them at the back. Um, once again, this is if it's a little bit more spread, trying to get them to the front, um, and and then having this block getting up in the air. So that that's a little bit of my thoughts on on that on, on the images that I saw in my preparation. Um, that's what I would have tried. And then obviously um, on that, just, just a little bit of variation every now and then is actually on the shorter line outs, um, varying between a bit of man watch and a bit of choosing zones, just, just, just to, to show them different pictures. So, yeah. Okay. Any thoughts on uh, Deval's, uh Kendo? No, no, I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. Um. And then if you want to clear up there again, and then we'll talk about the last one is sort of goal line. Is it, and if it's the way Wales, uh, nine man, Kendall, do you want to jump in on that one? Um, yeah, look, I would, again, you're not going to have seen loads of it. It's not going to be something that you've, you're going to put a lot of your training time into. So yeah. I would remain with my seven man. Yeah. And I'd try and stop it because you, know, you don't know what, what those backs are going to do. Are they going to drop out? Are they going to go blind? Um, I'd keep market with my seven, but I would cue my, my big 12 that, look, if everyone's in this mall and we look like we're in a bit of trouble, you're going to have to come in and hit it as well. Or as my tail gunner hits it, you're going to have to condense things up and, and help us there. But again, I would force them to the front and then I'd just be coming. Where are we? So... I would be in the same, the same sort of one here, you know, roughly a three here, roughly a three here type of thing. But I'd actually, you know, the, these guys would be a lot further forward now. As soon as we see the the eleven and the, uh, uh, we just get rid of that. sorry, you know, we'd be more around here, um, and the pod here. And then as soon as, soon as they win it at the front, we're just all coming down that angle. Um, just making sure that they that they're not going to have the advantage on the mall there, and we're coming down, coming down, hitting that angle, stopping the drive, um, yeah, and just again keeping it as simple as possible, getting there early, making sure that we're going to get up in the air if they come near us here, 
otherwise we want them to have this space in terms of hitting that mall kendo do you have a sort of would you defend that mall any differently being on the goal line than you would up the pitch uh, no, no, I mean, look, you, you wouldn't coach to defend it differently in that you want them in, you know, as, as early as possible, that, that's legal. You want them in aggressively, you want them, you want their entry points organised so they know where they're hitting, each man knows where they're hitting, who they're hitting. Um, the intent of forwards tends to go up a few percent once you're on your goal line, but, you know, you want your team to be that have that high intent throughout every single mall and in every every defence. Nice. Tafal, did you do? Yeah, yeah. I, I There's a lot of um, truth in there. But, uh, I just think if you know that they've got something like this in their ar- armoury, um, I think you can also d- destabilise them by showing them something totally different. So... Uh, if I had to put on my sorcerer's hat and try and beat them, I would I would try something totally totally different here. Yeah? In the sense of, um, sorry, let me just clear that. Uh, I would set up clear that. Sorry. So what what I do is I would um, I would set up here uh, and I would go really crazy. Uh, I would put my nine here, if a nine or a winger, somebody that's pretty light. Um, I'll go back to my stamp. Bum. Then I would go with a solid pod here and a solid pod here. So I'll have all my forwards in there. I would have, uh, sorry, this is me having a, a head of a time with my drawings here. And I'll have my, obviously, my 10 and my 12 defending out here. I won't take into account the 11, 6, 11, 12, because um, I really want them to try and do that with guys that are not used to doing that job. I would pot up, um, sorry, let me just put my phone on. I would pot up year, year, and then what I would really try and do with this to try and show them something different, I would actually throw this nine as high as I can off the hooker's throw and put some bodies in there and, and then just say to him, listen, I'm going to throw you as high as I can. But once you come down, all you're going to go do is you're just going to go to the blind and go and defend with a nine. And then just obviously we've got them to stop them to get that middle back ball and just show them something different and get them out of their comfort zone um, with them just thinking, because there's not a lot of threat at the back here. Um, the ideal ball for them would be uh, maybe four, seven going up. So really go hard on them. And then we all know that if they take that eight in the front, the only reason why I wouldn't set up alone here with one guy is if they take a no jumper to the eight and then they, they already a 3v1 and just a very dynamic mall um, over the, the one person here on his own. Um, that's the only only threat I've had there, and, and I'll tell you why. Because Nathan Hines has done it to me, and you look, you've got a lot of egg on your face when when that actually happens, uh, and they finish behind the line. So that's the only reason I'm always been scared of that, and I've got video footage of of that very sad moment. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon of that, Kendo? Chuck and Steely up in the air. Yeah, I like it. I like it, Frank. Frank Lamani, he's a tall, he's a tall nine, isn't he? He'd probably steal it. Yeah, you're back in Virginia and doing it anyway, wouldn't you? <laughs> so, so that's that's the only one there. If I, if I look at that now, because we obviously don't don't come across it a lot, it's just trying to play with their minds as well. Yeah. Because so. hopefully you can put that together and we'll be like you sort of say, Ken. Though they're going to do it once every ten games. You don't want to be spending forever on it, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great, lads. So what I'll do now is we'll just go through. Uh, if you can clear your drawings there. So the spanner in the works for all the statistics and what we've been talking about is obviously that their main jumper Justin Tipperick isn't playing. So, Kendo, do you want to talk through how that would sort of change for you on a Wales usually name their team on a Tuesday for a Saturday game, so three. You probably have two training sessions before. Maybe one involves your defensive lineup. You want to anything sort of change because James Davis is in instead of Justin Tipperick? 
So I don't think in this example, anything would really change. I think whilst even though Tipperix may be a bit quicker, I don't see it changing that much in an already established line out with a lot of experienced internationals. I think as we discussed earlier, it's if you end up losing a, you know, a, a serious aerial sort of an old school, like Tom Croft type of six and putting in a, a James Haskell, so, you know, if you lose a real, like, a line-out back row, uh, a sort of locky line-out back row, and then you put in a, a bigger unit, then that can change the picture slightly. If you were to lose Alan Wynne-Jones and put in a young uncat lock as a caller, then that might change what, what you're going to do slightly. It might alter your, your plans that you'd have already had in place. But for the sake of Tipperick, whilst he is quick, whilst we know he wins a lot of ball, it's, still really, it's not going to change my defensive strategy. In, in that instance. Same for you, Devout. So you're not in there? hundred percent. hundred percent. I think uh, I agree 100%. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to prepare the game. It's, um, it's a well-drilled side. Just stick with our system because our system also serves to for the general defense and what threats they go after the line-out. So I think that's why um, we shouldn't get too clever in a short space of time. Nice. So... Uh, as you sort of mentioned about the coordinated strategies about that like, you'd be talking to your defense coach uh, for your meeting before the like the Friday before or whatever what can you go after what you can just in terms of the first coordinated strategy Kendo if you're the Fiji um, if you're working with whoever's working with the exits in Fiji are you asking them to kick the touch or are you asking them to keep it in play do you think um, against Wales probably keep it in um i don't actually want lots of line outs my percentage wouldn't be that high their percentage is very high um again you know it's it's hard to say with when i've not looked at um, both teams for, for a while yeah all the counter attack and things like that but um you know fiji's such a dangerous back line and i'll probably try and keep the ball in um but yeah without knowing fitness levels and, and all sorts of information it's it's a difficult one to answer how about you, Devout? No, I agree. I, I also think that um, that I would uh, I would try to. I don't think that Fiji would win the ping pong battle um, on a kicking game, but they will be very dangerous if we do kick at at um, Wales. We're a pretty structured side that might not run from their own half. That will have a one ruck policy and kick or kick. Um, then that would give us a few counter counter attacking opportunities with with some really good individuals. So I don't want to get into too much of a set piece battle with with this well side. Um, I think they're more, more structured uh, and disciplined side that they they won't go out of structure and just run from anywhere. So I'd rather keep it in. Um, would you would you prefer to keep the ball in hand, or would you do you still be looking for probably those if you? kick to keep it in play to give you those counter-attacking opportunities or would that sort of be something you wouldn't worry about in regard to lineouts? No, I just think you have to keep the ball in hand in the right places on the field against a well-drilled defence like um, like Wells. Don't, yeah. be, don't be trying to play silly buggers in your own 22, uh, especially with a big kicking um, full-back and good fly-off. So, so I just... I, Back my one-on-one, -on -one, if I'm the Fijian coach, I'll back us beating them on the one-on-one -on -one skill set offloading type of game. Um, but I just don't won't get too crazy everywhere. Brilliant. So the last bit is we'll just sort of, we'll go through the Fiji line-outs. And yeah, same again. If you